So four main areas of performance. Remember that uh, even with the interest rate cap, banks have remodeled their business. So digital side of, our, of the bank, so mobile lending, mobile transactions, fees and other income, that has been a very big of investment. So that's one area that we continue to see big investment in the KCB. So that's one area driving our growth. So our fees and commissions, mobile lending transactions has gone up. That's one aspect. Two, we've seen a lot of performance from our international businesses. So right. like Rwanda performed more than 60%. Tanzania grew more than 100%. Uganda grew by 60%. Overall, they are contributing now up to 10% of our income. So the growth of our international businesses was 65% year on year. That was very strong growth. And we're still able to lend. Our loan growth grew by 10% last year. Kenya grew by 8%. So that is also a sign of growing where we are getting opportunity for us to expand. And finally, we've been able to adjust completely well. Last year, 2017, we had a huge expenditure of a restructuring cost of 2 billion shillings, which right. is uh, circa $20 million. So that was not repeating itself. We are seeing the benefits. But if you think about the opportunity, we're seeing more space for us to grow in our business in Kenya and in the region. Speak to me about uh, SME financing here, because when we saw in 2016 okay. the Red Cup taking a center stage in Nairobi, everyone complaining about it, bankers right. from uh, their uh, uh, borrowers themselves. Correct. What are we looking at currently as in terms of uh, financing towards the small and medium enterprises? So sector? this has been very, uh, in one way, it's been the greatest impact, or it's been, I could use the word catastrophic. Right. So lending to SME has reduced by almost 20% on a year-on-year -year basis. And in terms of figures, this is almost uh, $200, $200 million. So, so that's, that's a big amount, especially if you're looking at it on an annual, annual basis. So because we can't price the risk today because of the rates which came down, SME then are out of money. They are out of business. There's no cash available. Industry... Is an, and we want it. This right. is what we won in the last time in 2016. So when I look at the year-on-year -year basis, lending to SMEs is down 200 billion shillings. It's a huge amount. It means they are going into unregulated institutions to borrow from themselves. So that's for me is a big concern as a, as a bank, that right. we need to find a way. And remember, SMEs create the majority of the jobs. Right. They're in the businesses we're looking for. It could be your small businesses, or someone who's trying to sell clothes, someone who's importing products. So what we are doing, so we see them borrowing from the mobile platform, right. mobile lending. But you know the limits are very small. And, and that actually wanted me to bring uh, this okay. question up to do with uh, the mobile uh, banking. Correct. Do you see this uh, phasing our traditional banking at the time? Because we've been uh, having issues where you find ATM mach ATMs uh, not uh, being readily available with uh, money or sometimes having hiccups most of the times. And it takes quite a tremendous amount of time to get money from the banking hall. So do we see the uptake of mobile transactions Correct. phasing out traditional well, <laughs> No, I wouldn't say phasing out, but I would say that if banks invest, financial institutions put their money to invest in digital mobile channels, if you talk about the digital side, so which is a mobile side, mm. or we make investment in agencies, if you invest in those, then the banks will be able to catalyze the transformation into the new business model. Right. So there's a chance to, f to lead. So I call it the banks can leapfrog the future or disrupt themselves. That's what we're doing. But today on the lending side, a lot of people are lending today. And traditional banking, the way we used to know, give you an example. Today we approve, if you think about 10 million loans in a year, 9.9 .9 million loans are approved on the mobile. Right. So less than... 2-3% are approved on, on the traditional bank as we see it. So in a way you are seeing, especially for Africa and in our markets, this is, a, I mean, we've, this year we will lend $100 million per month on the mobile, which is almost $1.2 billion per year. That's how much we grow a whole year right. as a whole institution. Mm -hmm. So I see that if you invest and you continue pushing, I can say that Kenya, Rwanda, Tanzania are already on the forefront. So if you don't invest, a number of transactions for the bank are happening on the mobile. So today, 85% of our transactions are digital. It does mean that if you are not investing in that area, the older banking model, you're right, will exit. And the new players, it doesn't mean that banks will stop existing. New players mm. will offer banking services. Right. It could be the large telco companies, it could be large IT companies, it could be banks which are fintechs. I think we are seeing something that is exciting, a great opportunity to catalyze, but we have to invest. Joshua, we understand that uh, KCB has a larger plan to enter at least 10 
African countries. Correct. Right. Currently, you're looking at uh, Ethiopia, you're looking at Somalia, and uh, the Democratic, and Congo. Democratic Republic of Congo Correct. as uh, part of your expansion plan. Correct. Isn't this too optimistic, okay, given like the current situation of these countries? Well, I would say that we're a long-term player. Mm. There's never... What, what you must learn, our philosophy as a business, what you have to learn is that there's never a perfect moment for investment. Right. What you need to be sure is that you're investing during the curve that the market is turning. This mm. is how we went into South Sudan. All our countries have challenges, not just in within Africa, countries globally. I mean, who knew about the challenges we see in many emerging economies? So uh, this is a five-year plan. Right. So it's not, and there are many reasons why we want to go to invest. So the, most likely the country we will think of investing most is in, in, in Ethiopia. What does your board say about Correct. this? So we have got an approval to right. invest in those three countries, but there must be conditions. Mm. The investment return, we must be able to meet it. The opportunity for us to operate and meet international guidelines about financial institutions, we must be able to do. So when those are, like Somalia doesn't meet those requirements, so we will never <laughs> invest in Somalia, <laughs> correct? Right. The, the DRC remains an area that we continue to see opportunities. And our expansion will be much more driven now mm. on acquisitions, mergers and acquisitions. Okay. So we're not going to set up a branch and start building it. It's going to be see a player, partner with themselves, link into growing our business. So if you think about it's a five-year agenda that we have, right. but until the conditions are right. Remember, we've been in Ethiopia from 2016. Yeah, but that was not really a fully-fledged operation. We've been, it is one way of trying to get a license in that country. So if it takes five years, mm. we're still going to be there. So what I'm looking at currently is that we do understand that Ethiopia does not really allow, or it does not have, the laws do not allow licensing for foreign banks Correct. to fully fledged uh, op operations what makes you feel like you could actually do business in ethiopia as kcb not just uh one office but the entire I mean, bank operations and, and, and i'll answer that question very clearly in most of these markets the route for entry depends on what the laws of the country will say right now you have two choices you can either stand and wait for the markets to be ready, mm. or you can be in the market in some form, willing to learn market practice, running the benchmarking, being able to accelerate conversation with governments. Right. And that's what our strategy is. I'll give you an example about banks in investing in China. Today, there are more than 40 representative banks in China. They haven't set up a branch. Mm. They are not running an operation. But when the time comes for them, they understand the regulations. They understand the model of doing business. They are, that's how we're going to see that opportunity. So I'm excited personally to see that whereas we may not achieve them in the short term, mm. in the near term, which is three to five years, when the market opens, we'll be able to make an investment. And we must achieve the investment guidelines that the board has set for us to invest.